Okay. And for anyone who doesn't have it pulled up yet, the agenda notes link is in Zoom chat. Please feel free to, or encouraged to jump in and log attendance. And while you're logging attendance, if anyone has anything that they can jog out of their brain that they'd like to talk about or that might be helpful to other members of the community. Let's see. Um, Andre, it looks like you said, or Andre, uh, you're having access trouble to the doc. Uh, if you can double. Yeah, I have no edit access anymore. I don't know what has changed. Okay, if you can make sure that the account that you're logged in with right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. it's the one Sorry. that's <laughs> with the Google group. I, it always comes back to haunt me. All right, looks like everybody's logging attendance. So thank you for that. Um, definitely add anything to the agenda and open floor that comes to your mind either now or during the call and we will circle back to that. Um, is there anyone new on the call that we can welcome to the group? Um, we'd love to hear what brought you in today and how you're using Cooper. Hi, I'm new. This is Bob Adair. I'm joining from, uh, from Catalogic Software. Um, I'm just here to kind of uh, listen into what's going on. We're, we're uh, doing some work on, well, okay, Catalog provides backup and data protection software, and we're looking into uh, how we may add support for Cubert to our uh, our data protection software, so. Awesome, thanks for joining, Bob. Thanks. Um, it looks like today's agenda might be a bit light. It usually is towards the end of the summer when everyone's getting ready to head back into their normal routines. All right, so nothing on agenda notes. We're going to jump right into open floor. So we have a talking point on aligning Kubert with Kubernetes release guidance. I'm gonna pull that link up. Um, I don't see any initials on who submitted that one. Does anyone wanna to talk to this? Sure. Hey, uh, this is Ryan. Um, I, I had this and uh, I started to throw out about it on the mailing list. And so I, um, my, my pitch to, uh, you know, the, the community and, and what I wanted to discuss, um, here and, and in this pull request is, uh, so the, you know, the current state of the release process in Qvert is like, everyone knows it's a monthly process. And, um, well, basically what I'm proposing is, um, is changing it and changing it to match what Kubernetes does. And there are a number of reasons for why this is a good idea that I have been listed in the PR. And so I'll just go over those real quickly. And um, I would say some of the big ones are like when, when you look at the current, say the project, um, it's, it's very mature, it's production ready, you know, many vendors use it. Um, and in this in its current state, the release cadence, uh, monthly release, can be difficult uh, for for vendors and and other end users to keep up with. And so, one of the challenges is that always comes about with this very very quick release cycles, sort of the, the question of like when, you know, when when are you going to upgrade to the new version? It's something when things are monthly, this becomes a very challenging question to answer because there's always a new version. That's got something that you maybe want every month, and well, that's great. There's always there's always other there's there's downsides to this, and things like supportability, stability, and and things like that. that like when I I guess a good example is like if I wanted to backport something that's important uh, to me, usually what what end up happening is you know I backported a few releases, but when with the monthly release cadence, one of the challenges is is a, it comes a point where after four releases, five releases, six, seven, eight, it becomes too painful 
to to do backports and then it becomes really a challenge altogether to you know to say okay well at this point i, I can't really backport um you know i'm too far behind you know now now what do I, what do i have to do to to support um or to get this uh this bug feature or this bug feature or security fix and and this is something we see in the community a lot like we i think when we look at doing backports i think a lot of times things only get backported a few releases because it becomes too challenging and so what i'm proposing is to slow slow things down a little bit to make this process a little bit easier for 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 a whole number of those reasons portability and, and making those backports easier making it easier for vendors to to catch up and, and consume these things and and so the process that Kubernetes has, which is uh, releasing three times a year, every 15 weeks, um, seems pretty sensible and they've had some success with it. So um, my thought was that what we could do is we could follow the same cycle and we could trail Kubernetes um, with their releases. So the idea is they go through a 15 week cycle release and then at some point in time, maybe a few weeks later, Kubert would follow up with their release. Um, and then, you know, we'd have supported releases, you know, within the same framework we do now, which is like three releases with Kubernetes. Um, and, and so we keep the same promises. We just sort of change that frequency that we release. So I just want to get thoughts from people. And, you know, if people don't have any, that's fine. We can always discuss further on the PR. And so I just wanted to make people aware this is something that we're discussing in the community right now. Great. Thanks, Thanks. for bringing that up. Um, do we have feedback from anyone on the call right now, thoughts that might contribute to scoping some of the call or further the conclusions that we should be headed towards. I know that there's conversation going on for this in other venues. Please be sure and participate where, wherever you might be able to add some clear, um, ask questions to clarify yourself or add useful information to help us decide on that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the arm item. Pull that up. Um, not seeing initials on who submitted this one. Does someone wanna to speak to it? Uh, yes, hi. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, this is uh, the first issue, uh, the previous one, uh, is, uh, is a plan from Daniel uh, that uh, how we can add an um, uh, onboard arm cluster. Uh, and I have done the uh, the first, uh, first, uh, the first item on board class Q Pro, I have put uh, according to the document. Uh, but um, I want someone can review this issue. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Howard, yeah. this is Daniel. Oh, hi, Daniel. Hey, I'm, I'm totally sorry. I just didn't get to reviewing it. I'm, I'm, I need, I owe you one on that. Okay, cool, cool. And I also have a question for this. Uh, we have another, uh, currently we have one um, server for the uh, Kubernetes community and uh, it's have been deployed uh, Kubernetes by, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, pronounce it, uh, Figmenzi. Yeah, but I, I saw he was in the retired reviewer. So I suppose he not, uh, he's not do contribution to Kubevert community now. And now we have another server for the community. Um, um, so, so how, uh, who I can ask to, to like deploy Kubernetes on it, or uh, should I do it? Um, I, I, I 
think that you are talking or you 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 were mentioning Federico Jimenez. Is that correct? Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. And I think he, he deployed Kubernetes on, on that cluster, to be honest. I'm not exactly sure, but um, what, you, what, you, what you could always uh, do with uh, probably uh, Brian, are you on the call? Uh, uh, Brian is not here. Yeah. Hey, Daniel. How are you doing? Hi. Hey. Thanks, you? thanks for chiming in. Um, I was just uh, thinking probably um, if uh, Howard was asking us uh, for uh, deployment of Kubernetes on the on the cluster. And um, do you have information on uh, how Federico did it last time? Do you know? Um, I, I was taking a quick look at this a couple of days ago, and it looks like it was deployed using Ansible or using KubeSpray, um, similar to other clusters. So we do have some Ansible defined in the project info repo. So I could look into that further. Um, that's as much as I know right now. Um, I was meant to review Howard's ticket as well, but I didn't get around to it, unfortunately. Okay. Um... That sounds like we have some review uh, planned. Um, is this? Is there anything else that you need until that's done? Um, okay, well, I will talk with Daniel and uh, Brian okay. uh, offline. Thanks. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. So um, last time I'm on open floor right now. If you have anything else to add, uh, feel free and drop it while we're covering this one. Um, ability to specify exact image names for kubevert operator and vert DTL, just like CDI is doing. Yeah, um, I just want to say that we are trying to implement kubevirt as model to our Kubernetes uh, distro, which is called deck house. But we uh, have very specific um, logic for building and pushing images. Um, yeah, please open first link, not the second one. <laughs> And we would like to have uh, an ability to specify uh, specific image names, like for all the components, uh, because currently it is not possible. Kubert always expecting that all these uh, suffixes will be existing, and they hard code it, and there's no opportunity to change them. And actually, I wrote some. Uh, initial uh, implementation with just changing uh, takes the image names from the environment variables. But I think uh, it might be nice to contribute it to upstream. And I just want to know if uh, it's, it is needed change, if somebody has the same problem as me, or I can keep it as patch um, just for our deck house distribu distribution. Hey, um, I had a question regarding this. So um, I'm still new to the project, um, so I'm curious. Um, there is a, so the operator has an image and then operator reconciles a uh, cubevert uh, CR. Uh, that CR also has a spec. I wonder if um, the, the images configuration for all the other uh, component members can uh, reside in, in that spec. Um, and, and like more general question, like what what is the policy of changing? Like wh what are the things that go in that spec and what are the things that go in an in, in environment variable? Is there like a, a standard practice? Well, I just show, I just saw there is two options how you can specify kubevert images. Actually, in operator, there is already a support of environment variables, uh, but it is done just for specifying di digest for the images. So you can uh, specify specific digest for every image. And you can also specify kubevert version there because uh, it's um, calculating the version number out of the image tag, its own image tag. 
So I just changed this logic to specify the exact image names. Of course, most of the operators are doing that by the specifying it in a custom resource. In custom resource of KubeVirt also, there is an opportunity to overwrite the repository name, image prefix, and tag. But the problem is it always expecting images under a specific path. For example, Virt API, Virt operator, Virt handler, and stuff like that. Uh, I need actually an opportunity to overwrite uh, these images fully for every component. I would like to have an opportunity to specify them. Right, yeah. So what I was wondering is like, can we put that in, in the spec instead of the environment variable? That way um, only the operator image goes in the environment variable and the spec which can change on the fly uh can populate uh different um, you know uh, other components and its uh, images yeah and i like this idea of to putting it into CRI because uh there is uh to cr to custom resource sorry because there is a tool with virtcatl which is also downloading images according to the configuration from custom resource for example, if you use uh, command uh guest fish, it will download uh, image uh, using standard kubevirt uh, repository name tag and with the uh, hard-coded suffix guest tools. So I think I think it would be nice to have this such opportunity. What do you think, folks? And if you are into that, I will prepare PR or should I make some proposal before what them actually should I do with that? Sounds like uh, going direct to PR is probably a good idea. Um, the switching it from environment variables to spec probably makes sense. And if I am speaking out of turn, Anyone, please go ahead, jump in and correct me. Um, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, hi, it's Ivo. Uh, I wanted to address uh, the question of Alai Patel regarding uh, whether if it's possible to modify uh, the components that are being controlled by a virtual operator. So it is possible, you can see the customized components field in which you can specify in a JSON patch format what you would like to change in a particular deployment or a diamond set. Uh, currently, we can patch only deployments and diamond sets uh, only. We cannot, uh, there is no support for patching uh, other kinds of resources, for example, uh, uh, Prometheus rules. Uh, uh, we do not, uh, uh, we don't have support, for example, patching this kind of uh, custom resource. So yeah, you can use customized components. And regarding your suggestion, Andre, yeah, sounds mm, some makes sense if it is required in your case to have this kind of control over the full, uh, the full name, uh, the full path of the of the containers uh, that are provided by. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was trying to use uh, this uh, feature and I was able to customize just specific components, um, but it wasn't working in some certain cases. I actually don't remember for sure. I had issues somewhere and I'm going to put it here when I find it. Unfortunately, I can't find it. Yeah, right if now. you... It... If you have some issue and uh, if you can open an issue, you can also uh, assign me a tool to that. Okay, okay. Oh, I found I found an issue. So I will first I will put it here in this document, and then I'll assign you just to get your feedback. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you for bringing that up. All right. 
So presuming no other um, items on anyone's mind, I'm going to jump into PR's mailing list review and bug scrub. Double check PR's real quick. I had a little bit of a walkthrough before, and I don't think there's anything there that needs our attention. Okay. Everything seems to be responded to. I am going to I think. trust you then on those two. And if anyone has anything that they want specifically looked at, let's drop the PRs and or links to mailing list. And we'll pull those up. All right, do we need to assign anyone on the CVE issue that's been here, it looks like, for a couple of weeks? Or do we need to respond to it with a release cadence when we expect an update or something like that to happen? Are we planning on bumping to one go 1.19 anytime soon? Yeah, it looks like we should. We would want like uh, we need to bump uh, the builder image in order to uh, okay. um, in order to update the build tool chain. Yeah. I wonder if. Should I attach that to a milestone or anything like that? Um, I, I can shine a little bit in, into that probably. Um, we have this popping up every now and then, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and we were looking into probably adding some uh, container scanning tools into our regular uh, build process. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to that for now. We are just uh, currently just evaluating because um, the, the CNCF uh, provides uh, SNCC, and that's something that we were looking into, um, which then probably should, um, um, yeah, uh, how should I say it, uh, should, should show all the issues that they are currently uh, creating manually. So. Yeah, for now, I think it's always good to, to, to uh, answer on those issues, but I'm not exactly sure if we, we should put that, that to a my, milestone or something like that. What, what do the rest of the people on the call think? No need to all speak at once. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think we should have some automated way or uh, some policy so we can address such, uh, such events and to react, to respond to them, uh, I think, uh, as soon as possible because we don't want to be vulnerable. Both. Another way probably what, I, I, what would be what would be uh, uh, some some kind of solution at least would be something to try to automate the Golang update, but I'm not sure how how valid of a path that is. So I I don't know. I think for for the short term at least we have to bump it manually. Mm, I think so too. For the short term, for the long yeah, for the long term we should think about some kind of automation or that will connect the scanning tool, uh, the review of the CVs related to the tool chain and creation, a job that will create an automatic bump. But that's for the long term. That's for, for the short term, let's just bump <laughs> the tool chain. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. Do we think we will be doing this in the next release or in one or two releases do we have an estimate i think uh, in the next release for sure uh, since uh, 
we have released tomorrow, I think. Okay. So yeah, for the next release. I think we even have a document on how to update the Go version, but I can't find it right away. It should be somewhere in the Markdown uh, Docs folder, somewhere. Uh, I remember Itamar uh, was documenting it. Uh, we do have something. I just need to look at the docs. Oh, there it is. I'm just going to drop the link into the um, into the chat. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right, vert launcher troubles on new nodes. Must be Ubuntu. Sure enough. Interesting. Um, I feel like there are a lot of possible questions to run with this. What if it's inconsistent between nodes? First, it feels like a nodes issue and not a throughput issue. Are kubevert issues the best place, do you think, to chase deployment issues? Or is Slack a good recommendation? I think that could probably still be a good place. Um, I think it's a valid stuff to, to just add into an issue. But yeah, um, in general, normally, of course, you would get more direct reaction probably when you would, would try the Slack channel. But 
Yeah. But for for um, uh, when you have more stuff inside that you want to want to share, like for example logs and so on, I think that an issue would be the perfect place for that. Okay. I'm going to save this and follow up right after the call. I think I have a couple ideas for where to run with that. So that'll take a few minutes. Um, do we have something like audit logging on the MI events? I don't remember what actually lives in the operator logs. Uh, I think uh, VMI is deleted uh, by design. This is like this is the way uh, you build works. Uh, oh by... yeah, I was not reading that carefully enough. So VMI. VMI deprecation warning warning logs. I feel like this issue might solve itself once it's deprecated. Is this an impact level that we want to address? definitely have no opinion on it.
20. I think this looks like a follow up. Um, I think Lee Yarwood is the one who created this one. And I think he's actually the one who is actually working on the deprecation, if I understand correctly. Okay, so it looks like something that he would be assigning to himself. I, I guess so. I just I guess that he just forgot that probably he would assign it to himself. <laughs> okay. Fedora thirty six microcates and Kubert. Fun combo. Looks like there is oh, okay. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, I can't jump on this one. Um, I could in like three weeks, but that's unreasonable. The main reason it's interesting to me is because it's the Kubert Fedora example image. And supposedly the key difference between it working and not working is just different versions of Kubert. I'm trying to remember what runs in CI. Does anyone have that off the top of their head? Okay, 
um, if someone feels inspired and can jump on that and provide any useful feedback, that would be fantastic. I'm sure their community would appreciate you for it. And otherwise... Sorry, the, the question was whether what, on what uh, Kubernetes versions we run our tests, is that correct? No, I'm wondering um, what the VMI spec and image used in CI is. Because I almost feel like something like this should be caught in CI if it's a kubevert issue. I'd say the same. And what I, what, I, what I found interesting in that was that there was some, I think it is not a plain Kubernetes that is used. It is a micro Kubernetes. Can that be? Yeah, it's well, it's micro Kates, but they're saying mm. that the difference is v bumping from version dot five zero to dirt dot five six of kubevert. Okay. I think the migration path in general is normally not directly to bump from one version to a couple of versions later, but to migrate one one to the next and. Um, Maybe that might be a problem. I, well, it I, looks like the report is saying that you can create it from scratch this way. Hmm. Okay. And, then, and right now, my I actually have a Fedora 36 with microcates running and yeah. kubevert on it as my main hypervisor. And it's dead right now, too, but for different errors that... Okay. Were su surprising, um, but actually, I think that originated from a Fedora update issue, so I, I I can't jump in and recreate this in a timely fashion right now. I don't have time to fix my hypervisor, even even though I need it right now. Mm. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think it it feels like it it deserves somebody at least attempting to recreate it and see if they get the same errors since it seems like they're testing reasonably same stuff. Um, so if someone feels inspired and can jump in, that would be awesome. Yeah, so I'd say I'd, uh, please assign it to me. I'll try to find someone who can who can look, take a look at this. Okay. Thank you. All right, and with that, that concludes the last community meeting of August. So thank you all for joining and participating. Welcome, um, Andre and Bob. Um, I will see you all same time, same place next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.